Today we are down in historic Shaker Village in Central Kentucky and we're going to do a field trip with the Kodak Retina Automatic 3. All right, first thing we need to do is load up this film, which takes three hands. Okay, and then we're going to uh, put this down to zero, go to one. All right, and we're good to go. Okay, now, despite living in this area nearly 30 years, uh, I've never been to this place. So we're gonna be exploring this together. And I'm not sure if this meter works. I've got my other meter as a backup. And this time I did, in fact, bring a battery. So let's start with this here. Let's get our meter reading. And we've got 250 at nearly 5.6. What have we got here? I put this at 250. Nope, this meter is showing a much brighter exposure. Of course, it's a reflected versus incident, but that's all right. I put this at F11 at 60th. I don't want to frame this here. Well, we might be running into a first technical problem here because <laughs> we are not firing our shutter or advancing our film. Uh-oh, we might be dead in the water right from the beginning. Oh, that's right. So, I <laughs> I forgot that these cameras count down from 36 to 1. They don't count up. So when I set my counter to 1, I told it it was done and it couldn't go any further. Okay, now let's try this. We were at f11 at 60th of a second. You need to remember not to turn the aperture while actually trying to focus. All right. Moving on, now that we've got our technical difficulties worked out, let's go explore a little bit, shall we? So if you're not familiar with the Shakers, it was a religious movement in the 1800s uh, that, I don't know, they, they separated men and women, um, so they didn't interact at all. And so the buildings had two front doors, one for the men, one for the women. They were completely separate. They would have flour on the floor uh, at night to make sure nobody crossed over. They didn't have children, they only adopted. Uh, so obviously if you're not going to procreate, you die out. And that's what, exactly what happened. They were called the Shakers because they would have these shaking religious fits. Peculiar part of 18th century middle America. When it comes to this camera, it is a uh, kind of another version of the Retinet. So it's a smaller body than say the uh, Retina 3S, which had interchangeable lenses. This is a fixed 50 millimeter 2.8. And it's a Schneider Kreuznach lens, the Retina Xenar. It's not exactly the same as the uh, 50 millimeter 2.8 interchangeable lens. The optics aren't quite as good. 
It does have a coupled range finder. Uh, it does have a selenium light meter, which currently is showing it as extremely bright. I've never really checked to see if my particular model uh, works well with a meter or not. The uh, needle does move. It does respond to light. But I'm not going to go and test to see if it's currently accurate right now. Now, it's called the automatic because there is an auto setting. I've got auto plus my apertures and shutter speeds. So when you put it on the auto setting, it will automatically adjust the aperture based on the selected shutter speed. Let's get a picture of this. I'm losing our light. Changing clouds today. Let's see, 2.8 a thousand. Let's make that F8 at 25th. Now I am using uh, my very last roll of plus X. I've got some medium format left, but this is my last roll of 35 millimeter. Get closer. It's got a very peculiar winding mechanism. All the retinas have this where it winds on the bottom. Uh, it seems a little odd at first, but I actually kind of like having it there. Being left-handed, it's actually a pretty good place for me. I can hold it like I normally do and then just wind. What is awkward being left-handed is the range finder because I naturally want to focus with my left hand and uh, it blocks the range finder window. So that's a bit awkward for me. And then as I mentioned a few minutes ago, another odd part, well, odd for me, because I'm used to Minolta cameras, uh, the countdown for frames. So it counts down from 36 to one instead of from one up to 36. Minolta and Nikon do that. For those of you that shoot Canon, that probably does not seem all that different to you. I realize there are a lot of Canon cameras that do that. It's weird for me. Hey, horse. All right, let's take a picture of this field. <laughs> and this horse thinks he's gonna get a little treat from me. Hey, horse. Hey, buddy. All right, <laughs> ignore the horse. Shh. All right, let's keep going here. Now I have to say, I am getting a little interested in fields that have gone fallow. Uh, I'm looking at maybe starting a much larger project of that very concept. Uh, finding fields that have gone fallow, you think would be easy, but so many people use them just for hay. And it's not exactly the fallow I'm looking for. Now, if you get these, and you can get them in pretty good condition, like this one looks like it's never been used. I got it off eBay for uh, like $20, something like that. Um, they are in varying shapes of disrepair. This one, looking as though it's never been used, the shutters still get a bit sticky. Uh, I've worked it enough that it's loosened and I've not really had too much of an issue, but some of them just do need repair. But because they're kind of the low end version, they've never really had the service that a lot of the higher end retinas get, such as from uh, Chris Sherlock. All right, I want deeper depth of field on this one. Okay, my horse is laughing. So let's uh, let's tripod this up. Now the tripod is here on the side. Let's see if that works. If it doesn't, I've got my centering tripod connector. 
Oh, that seems to work okay. All right. I did, however, as I mentioned last time, I always forget something. What did I forget this time? Cable release. So we're gonna have to be very gentle with our shuttering. So I'm framing this right now with this fence post dead center. And we are going to a 30th at 16 and a half. There you go. All right, let's move on. So tripods off center I brought with me from that box of stuff off eBay. Ooh, that's nice with all the lines swirling through there. We'll do that one too. Um, this thing which sets the tripod on center. Let's attach that and check it out real quick. Now, why would you do it this way? I guess just if you're used to it. Um, I'm actually going to set this vertically. I'm going to keep it on the tripod because I'm at a 30th of a second, which is a little bit below. Well, I think we're going to have to handhold this simply because when I get down on my tripod, we're too low for the fence. So let's try to be very slow here. All right, onward. The rangefinder isn't as crisp as uh, I would like for it to be. That's probably due to age. Probably a lot of dirt in there, and I've never taken this apart to try to uh, clean anything in there. I may get one off eBay uh, to find another good deal and do exactly that. Right now, this does seem to be working pretty well. It does sound like I'm getting a little bit of shutter lag. Uh, not that it's slow, just that it's not firing the moment I push the button down. It's slow a little bit from inside there. Now with this being more of a low end camera, I'm not super optimistic about the sharpness of this lens. It is well coated. So hopefully we'll have good contrast. My most concern is that shutter being a little sticky. I'm concerned that might be uh, slowing down any actual shutter speed we're looking for. But if we have dense negatives, we'll just print through them. Take a picture. You're gonna lick the mud.
All right, just a handful of shots left. We'll wrap this up. Oh, the year of the cicada. Come out every 17 years to scream as loud as they can. Couple frames left. Just make sure we get at least one gratuitous selfie here. And that is it. Let's wrap this up. Get back in the car. We're going to develop this film and see what this looks like today. And that was a fun little field trip. Uh, I've never been to Shaker Village before, as I said. Uh, it was it was a nice place to explore, lots to do. I can see the appeal. Um, while it wasn't fully on camera, I did take an unexpected three mile hike through some uh, very tall weeds and grass. Uh, not, not exactly the way that I anticipated spending my morning, but we got some photographs. The, uh, the film, Plus X 125, as I said, my last and final roll of 35 millimeter. Went through this camera and, uh, and it worked pretty well. So we've got the film here. As you can see, didn't exactly get all the exposures. There's a lot of, a lot of blanks on there. That's just some shutter misfiring. So this definitely needs to be serviced. Uh, I will probably at some point break it open, see if there's anything I can do. Uh, I really got this just for shelf display and it's in such good condition. I might pick up a second one so that I can uh, open one up and fix it and still have a really pretty shelf display one at some point. The contact sheets turned out fairly well. Of course, obviously we got all the blanks from the misfiring. The negatives that we did get very overexposed the shutter is just dragging too much. So I trust my meter. Uh, we were shooting about 1 25th of a second at F16, sunny day. That's about right, sunny 16 rule. But we got overexposure from just the shutter not being at 1 25th. We were probably getting more like a 50th of a second. So that caused some uh, very dense negatives. And then of course we just had some that didn't shoot. They didn't fire at all. So that meant when it came to actually picking an image to print, uh, I had really kind of slim pickings on that. The, uh, the print that I chose, um, you can see from the style, I do have an aesthetic and that is surfaces uh, and using the uh, rule of thirds fairly well. Uh, it is just the way that I see things, especially when I'm just kind of testing a camera out. I didn't put too much effort. It's more just walking around. At that point, I'd already walked three miles out in the uh, fields and I was kind of tired. So I was kind of shooting away to finish the roll up. <clears throat> Overall though, it's a, it's a decently sharp camera. It's not excellent sharpness. That would be their high-end retina cameras and not this. This is more consumer grade. So I am getting, uh, and I don't know if you're going to be able to pick this up, uh, and no, I'm not going to scan it for this. Um, go out and pick one of these cameras if you really want to see. But the sharpness is decent. 
Is it super sharp? No, it's not. Is that because it's a lower end lens from Schneider? Very possibly. It's uh, probably a Cook triplet design would be my guess as to uh, to what kind of lens we have here. There is a little bl uh, a little bit of blurriness that is very possible that it is from a very slow shutter speed causing some motion blur, even though I set it at 1 25th of a second. If we were actually getting slower, and say like maybe a 30th, which based on these, that's very possible, then I might have actually gotten some motion blur. And this camera could possibly be sharper than what I'm getting here. But even looking at the well-exposed negatives, I'm going to say probably not. Uh, I think this is just as sharp as this camera gets, which is okay. I'm not going to make any big prints from it. 8x10, you can get away with. It's probably more suited for smaller than that, 5x7s. And in that case, they will look very sharp, and you'd be very happy with it. But overall, the feel of the camera, it's good. I like it. I like the way that Kodak has this uh, laid out with the winding knob on the bottom. The shutter controls are right here, right next to the focus. So I did find myself inadvertently changing shutter speeds instead of focusing. Uh, I'm not a particular fan of that, but overall, it's a solid camera. I'd pick one up if I didn't already have one just to play around with. Wouldn't be my everyday camera, wouldn't be my walking around camera, uh, but it is a fun little thing to have when you want something. I just need to get the shutter working properly. Other than that, that is it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed uh, seeing this little guy in action. Go out and get one if you're super interested. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again.